Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is going to be all about my evolution as a reader. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. And today's video is all about a subject I am really fascinated by and it is the evolution of a reader tag and this was turned into a tag by my great friend Jack from Spread Book Joy and Jack wanted to know like how have we all evolved as readers over the years and I think this is an absolutely fascinating subject. If you've also made this video let me know in the comments down below and if you are not a booktuber let me know in the comments the answers to some of these questions. So Jack's given us four questions to think about but I'm not necessarily going to answer them all just in a logical pattern but they are there for guidance so I'll include those in the description down below. Prompts are what you read, how has your taste in books evolved? Um, number two is how you read, has the format of your reading changed much? How much do you read, more or less than previously? When do you read and has how often you read changed? And finally, how has booktube changed you as a reader? So I'm gonna cover all of those points today. This could end up being a bit rambling, so please bear with me. And if you don't want to bear with me, then maybe check out a different video instead. First of all, a little bit about how I became a reader and how my taste has changed and evolved. I'm also a person like Jack who has never known really a time when I haven't been a reader. At home in my family there were always books around and my mum is an absolutely voracious reader. When we were young my brother and I were read to every night and my mum read us some great books as bedtime stories books that she had enjoyed as a child, books that she had enjoyed as a teacher as well because my mum was a teacher too. Some of the books we read were things like The Borrowers series, The Little House on the Prairie series, The Dark is Rising sequence by Susan Cooper, absolute top favourite books, things like Tom's Midnight Garden, just so many fantastic books that my mum read us when we were children and if my mum went out for the evening we still used to insist on a bedtime story from my dad and we would insist that my dad read us Topsy and Tim books. If you've never read a Topsy and Tim book they are I expect a staple of some British childhoods. They were about twins. Those twins got up to basically everything so there would be Topsy and Tim go to the doctors, Topsy and Tim go to school, you name it there was one. I think they were by Jean and Gareth Adamson. Yeah so we would get my dad to read one of these which were much more basic obviously than what my mum was reading us and we would always laugh because he would make a joke of reading us the publishing information as well as the story. My dad is a reader as well. I think I probably got my love of thrillers from him because he definitely introduced me to those. I I don't remember a time when I wasn't a reader. When I was young I was looking at books even um, before I could read them and memorising books before I could read them like Each Peach Pear Plum by Janet and Alan Allberg. As I got older I can't really remember what were the first books I was reading by myself. I have a memory of reading the Just William series from the library and sitting behind the sofa at home to read those for some reason. I can remember going on library trips uh, frequently as children and uh, getting to select what I wanted to read. I, I have always loved the library. When I went to high school there was the school library and in the school library sort of picking my own books unsupervised I came upon um, Point Horror, I came across Christopher Pike who I've talked about in several recent videos and I also came across other authors that I, I would really really love at that time such as Robert Cormier and all of these books have in common they were pretty dark and I think my taste in reading was quite dark um, even back then. But I liked books like that and I also really enjoyed, I can remember as a teenager, really enjoying sort of diary style books uh, like um, The Diary of Adrian Mole I remember reading 
and there was a series called the Diary of a Teenage Health Freak. I really enjoyed those. Later teenage years, I got into Buffy the Vampire Slayer books and read a lot of those. I would say that my taste was mostly contemporary, but I would pick up whatever was available. And again, I can remember in my late teens when I was at sixth form and, bef and before I would go to the library and I would just pick really random stuff looking back on it. When I started recording what books I was reading, that was back in 2000, and at first I was literally just recording titles of things I'd read. And a lot of the books that I found on that list that I entered into Goodreads are like really, really obscure on Goodreads, so I think I was really just picking up whatever I like the look of in the library and read some just really random sort of contemporary books. That was what I was almost completely reading when I went away to university. Once I got to university I started buying books quite a lot more. I would buy books at charity shops and then take them back to the charity shop afterwards. That was like the level of how great these books were that I didn't want to keep them. If I bought a book full price it would probably be at, at Waterstones on three for two and that I think was where the problem of getting too many books for what I was reading came from. The biggest change that I think has probably ever taken place in my reading was finding crime fiction and when I was looking back before making this video at some of my books of books, this one started in um, 2007 but I obviously have lists going back before then. I had read sort of thrillers mixed in with contemporary and the thrillers I noticed on my list were predominantly, um, before I found crime fiction, were predominantly Harlan Coben books, which I think my dad read and passed on to me or I borrowed from my dad's library. And yeah, I still read Harlan Coben now. So one thing that changed dramatically sort of at the end of my time at, at university, when I'd finished my exams, I bought a book from a stall in the student union and we'd looked at this stall many times and never bought anything because we were busy with exams and coursework and things. On that stall they had, I think, the first four Ian Rankin Rebus books. This is not the actual copy of the first book that I bought there. I took a chance on the first Ian Rankin book, uh, the first in the Rebus series, Knots and Crosses, from that stall. And I can remember reading that in my room at university and um, my then boyfriend, who is now my husband, read it second because he still had exams to do. Yeah, in that time between exams and sort of graduating, we read the rest of the books that they had on that bookstore of Ian Rankin. And I never looked back really. Once I found Ian Rankin, my taste very much shifted towards reading mainly crime, although my taste has always stayed eclectic. I will kind of try anything. But then uh, this led me on in February 2006, I discovered my very first Agatha Christie, which was Murder on the Orient Express. And again, not the same copy because I read this from my local library at the time. I picked this one up first and I read, I think, six more in that same month. And I was hooked. And sort of Agatha Christie, Ian Rankin became staples of my, my reading. And around that same time, I also discovered Tesca Ritson, which is a very different type of crime book to Agatha Christie. But alongside my Agatha Christie's, I was discovering things like Tesca Ritson, Karen Slaughter, and reading sort of modern crime books as well. That's been the main change in my reading tastes. And I'll come on to the changes in my reading tastes since Booktube in a minute. To talk a bit about uh, the frequency of reading and how much I've read over the years, it's noticeable looking back on book journals that times of intense amounts of reading have always coincided with times of not having much else to do. Yeah, when I was first reading Agatha Christie, I had a job that, where I used to go to work on the bus and I used to read on the bus to work and I used to read at lunch times at that job. There was lots of reading time. I then started my teacher training the following year and you can see um, from the entries in my book journal like how that caused a complete drop off in the amount of reading, but at no point have in 
my reading lifetime have I ever really completely stopped reading for pleasure. It's always been there in the background, even though sometimes it has been sort of one book <laughs> that has stretched over a month or so. I actually moved house that year, moved to a different county, discovered that there was a whole new to me library in that town and I read a lot from the library that year. And I was doing supply teaching at the time and applying to jobs, so I had quite a bit of reading time at the end of that year. But I've always enjoyed that you can kind of see those patterns of busyness. When I was a teacher, you can see months that are term time are like maybe one or two books, and the months that coincide with holidays are so much more reading. Before we go on to Booktube and how it's changed me, let's talk about the format of books. So I only actually started reading audiobooks in 2018. I've already done a video about my journey with audiobooks so I'm not going to repeat what I've said here but I now really enjoy audiobooks and they're definitely part of my reading every month. Although I definitely fluctuate, there's definitely months where I will listen less and read more on paper. There's definitely months where I don't feel like listening to audiobooks, so I will watch more booktube. Other months I will constantly listen to audiobooks while doing chores and while cooking. I do not read ebooks. I have tried to read ebooks this year and I had a little bit of success reading a couple of ebooks earlier in the year, but then I sort of hit a wall with it and I just didn't want to read books on my phone and I've never ever wanted to get a Kindle. I mean this in the nicest possible way and I don't grudge anyone their Kindle, I think. If you want to read, you should read however you want, honestly. And if that's on a Kindle, that is fine by me. But I don't personally believe in Kindles and I do not want to get one and I never have. Books for me are on paper, that's how I enjoy reading them. If needs must, I will get an ebook, but I really, really prefer to read books on paper or listen to them. So yeah, each to their own. And my preference is physical books all the way, which is why I've got so many physical books. Yeah, I think I've been through phases of um, when and how often I read. And there were times when I didn't read every day. Um, now on booktube I would say I read just about every day. There have certainly been times, especially in September for some reason, where a day would go by where I didn't read and the only difference really with a day where you don't read when you're on booktube to a day where you don't read before you were on booktube is that you might worry about it and it doesn't really matter that much to me whether I read anything today or not but because I want to keep up with what I'm reading. It's more actually for me than for booktube. What has booktube changed about my reading life? Firstly, it's changed the amount I read massively. But this, we also have to remember that this is a time where I have been less busy than previous times in my life. So when the pandemic happened, I was working in a preschool and I haven't been able to go back to um, teaching or teaching in a preschool so I have had a lot more free time in the last couple of years which was one of the reasons why I had time to start a booktube channel. There's no way I would be reading amounts like 15 books a month if I had lots of other time commitments. Booktube definitely encourages me because I set up the channel with the intention of trying to reduce what was on my bookshelves and that is still the case. That is still a core ethos of my channel. I want to reduce the giant TBR. I don't want to reduce it to zero. I have no desire to do that. I want to reduce it to a more manageable level. And more than that, I want it to reflect my current reading tastes. So let's talk about how my reading tastes have changed on booktube. So I didn't think this was going to happen because I started my booktube channel in May of 2021. I started it with the idea that I could participate in these events to encourage me to read what was on my shelves and only what was on my shelves. And mostly in 2021, I stuck to that. I didn't buy any books in the latter part of 2021. Unfortunately, in 2022, that has not been the case, but we're not talking about book buying, we're talking about book reading. So what has changed about my tastes in 2022? Well, 
I would say coming onto booktube I was very much a crime mystery thriller reader predominantly. I was really acquiring a taste for classics that had happened sort of in 2020 and moving into 2021 I had a desire to read more classics so that was always part of my channel as well. My taste has always been really eclectic I will pretty much pick up anything to read. Um, which is why the giant TBR has some really bizarre stuff on it at times. But yeah, 2022, what happened was I decided to join in with judging the BookTube Prize and I did this predominantly because I had not read any sort of up-to-date fiction in 2021. I think I'd read one book that came out that year and that was it. I therefore had to read six books that were published last year. They were pretty much all massively out of my comfort zone. They were nearly all kind of historical fiction driven and they were all from different countries and different authors that I hadn't read before and it totally changed me. In 2021 I was really really happy in my comfort zone chugging along with my cosy mysteries, with my non-cosy mysteries, with my crime, with my thrillers and along came the BookTube Prize and it showed me what is out there in the world of literary fiction <laughs> and I think I've read more literary fiction this year than I've read in my life and it opened me up to the idea that what if I was wrong about my reading tastes? Like, do I like historical fiction? It kind of turns out that I do. Since then, I have read books for the Women's Prize. I've found that I really like sort of historical and epics, and I've just become so much more open to reading like new releases and um, new authors that I haven't tried before and books from such a plethora of different countries and different perspectives and I found them so interesting. And it turns out that staying in your comfort zone isn't always the best thing. So I know that I will always read crime and mysteries and I will always love them. I still love all my books that I've loved in the past and I also really love revisiting books that I've enjoyed in childhood or in my teenage years. My biggest changes through booktube have been the type of books that I'm reading. I think it's just more told me that I could like anything and I think I knew that already. I knew I was an eclectic reader, I knew I just love books, but I would say there were genres that I didn't read and I've even discovered a fantasy book that I really enjoyed this year and I really really didn't think fantasy was for me. Talking to other people on booktube and joining in with events on booktube has definitely opened my horizons and made me see so many different genres and types of books that I wouldn't have otherwise tried so I'm really grateful to booktube for that. I guess the negative side of booktube for me is the same as the positive side. The problem is there are so many recommendations and I do get FOMO, I do get fear of missing out and it does make me go to the library and get books out and occasionally it has made me buy a book but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing always. It's just a bad thing when you're trying to keep your giant TBR under control. I suppose the other negative of booktube is that obviously making booktube content does take away from reading time. I think the biggest thing about how much I used to read when I was younger is that I didn't have a phone to look at. I was definitely not as easily distracted as I am now. So I do feel that in my heart of hearts I feel that I could read even more if I concentrated. And booktube has definitely stopped me participating as much in other hobbies other than reading. I was doing a lot of crochet before I started on booktube. I would say since I've started on booktube I've made Poirot, a couple of things for friends and that is about it. In summary, I've always been a reader, I've always loved reading, I can't envisage a time when I will not be a reader and love reading at the core of my self and booktube has only added to that for me largely. I just want to allow even more variety into my reading life. I think it's great to read a bit of everything. That is far too much talking about my evolution as a reader and if you would like to talk about your evolution as a reader please do make this tag. I tag 
everybody who's watching who hasn't been tagged yet. If you fancy giving this tag a go, please do. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. How have you evolved as a reader um, throughout your life? If you have enjoyed this video today, please do give it a like. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.